All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. I really wish we could put the pre-flight checks and the um, pre-recording conversation out sometimes. But then this occasion, we certainly can't. Yeah, true. It's funny, isn't it? It's like, yeah. I, I, when I listen to... I try and listen to other podcasts and think of, like, what I like about them. Obviously, you mm. do the same. Yeah. Yes. I quite... I, I like the ones that are just sort of a bit YOLO and a bit like... I quite like mm. a mellow start. I always You'll try and bring a bit one. of energy. I try and bring a bit of energy to the start. But actually, now I think of it, I don't mind when it's just a chat. Yeah, I do. It, it feels a lot more authentic, I think, when you're listening to a podcast and then, you know, they've been talking for a few minutes and you, and someone goes, are we recording? Like, are we on? And yeah, then, I like that, yeah. But nothing changes after. I really like that. And I think yeah, that's like that. kind of yeah. how we do it, right? We're chatting and then we're like, should we just hit record? Yeah, cool, hit record. And here we are, folks. Episode do we even say the number anymore? It's episode. It's eighty. 80. It's eighty, dude. We got eight, yeah, eighty. Eighty birthday. Eighty is a birthday. Time. Happy birthday, dude. Happy, happy Monday. Happy birthday to you. Happy Monday, mate. I look forward to Mondays. I'll be honest. I really do. I, I was looking forward to this chat today. I really was. I, I was really it's therapeutic. To it. I isn't think it? I, yeah, it is a bit of therapy. I really needed it, and uh, I'm excited to chat today. To be honest, so let's. Uh, Let's get into it. Like, I, there's a few things I just want to like. Let's just kick things. Just let kick things unload. Straight off. Unload. Let's just kick dude. things straight yeah, off. Let's man. And then we'll it, talk yeah. about our weeks. We'll talk about our weekend, etc. But I think one thing that's been on my mind a lot, especially over the last couple of days, is yeah. I've been through a bit of a awakening personally the last couple of years, especially. Right. Yeah. I think the lockdown, first of all, was uh, for a lot of people really bad. Really, really bad for a lot of people. Yeah. But for some people. Not as bad, you know, it gave a lot of time to think, a lot of time to breathe, a lot of time to step back and look at life and where you were headed and all that sort of stuff. And so there was that. So that I think that was a, a big thing for me. Like I, I did a lot of thinking, a lot of figuring things out and a lot of deciding where I wanted this life, whatever it is that you think about what, what it is that you're doing, where I wanted it to actually go. Yeah. And what I enjoy doing and what, you know, makes me a, a happy and fulfilled being navigating this yep, yep. timeline of life right yeah, yeah so there was that so and that was great obviously we started the lockdown companion we had a great time with that and things were going really well etc and then i guess it was kind of in the middle of lockdown uh i had my accident you know which yeah although it, although it wasn't life-threatening it was still a pretty big thing um i think for the main reason that that was a big thing is because you realize who really matters to you yeah. And I think we spoke about this before, but I maybe wasn't as vocal about it, but I'll, I'll be real. <laughs> you realise when you're injured, like, you know, and you spoke about this actually a lot about, you know, you, you're bored, you know, you, you, um, you're thinking a lot, you can't do the stuff that makes you happy. And you start seeing who's got your back and you start seeing who really reaches out and speaks to you and wants to support you and wants to make sure you're okay every couple of days it's you know i'm not needy i don't really care that much but it is nice when people are supportive of you right yeah. um and of course the podcast community are like my best friends that i don't know a lot of them right they're out there they're supportive and it's and it's a lovely thing that that we have and that we've created um but there's certain people that you think oh they didn't actually speak to me at all. Like they knew that they knew this. They knew I've been going through all this stuff, but not one. No, none of them actually reached out and said right, anything. Are, and... are we going to go through a list of people? Are we going to go through your blacklist? We got the blacklist. No, we have the black. Blacklist. Imagine that. Holy. Uh, so yeah, and I think you grow up with this sort of. Um, and I was thinking about this this morning. You know, there was with MySpace, Facebook. You have this, and Instagram, right? You have this thing of you trying to accumulate followers, okay? And I think it's a little bit like that with life. You're trying to accumulate as many friends as you can. You want to you want to build your pack as big as possible. I think I don't know if I do that, but I've definitely have. I remember like the early days of Facebook. You're like adding everyone. You just want friends. You just want to look popular, right? And then as you get a little bit older and you start working life out and you start realizing who's really there for you, you start discovering that actually. You don't need that that many people. You need a no. few really core, like nice people to surround you. Okay. Yeah. You think that's fair? Oh, I think it's hundred percent right. What's the what's the number? Is it Dunbar's number? Is it Dunbar's number is one hundred and fifty? So Dunbar, which is okay, which is yeah. really high. So so Dunbar's number, I believe, is actually um, 
how many people's names you can remember. I think that's what it is. Now we're all different. I remember I'm weird with names and email addresses. So I remember people's names and email addresses. This is from being out on the road, you know, meeting bike shops, whatever, yeah, yeah. like every day, you know, you'd see five or six shops a day. They all have three members of staff. You kind of have to remember everyone's name. It's a brilliant <laughs> skill to have. It really, it is, really and I'm, I'm really lucky because I don't forget people's names. It's really rare and I can, I can like figure it out pretty quick. Um, oh. if, if it's not quite there on the tip of my tongue, like it, it does come pretty fast. So I'm really lucky with that. Yeah. Anyway. So what I was going to say is you, you discover like, okay, you don't need that many people around you. I think what you actually need around you is a really core, supportive group of people, right? Yeah, absolutely, and, yeah. Okay, okay. so I'm going a little bit all over the place here. I'm just trying to explain my point a little bit, but I think we're going to yes. get there in the end. We're going well, to go a little bit around the houses, but I think we're going to, we're going to land all right, right nice. There. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm right. looking forward to it. This is like, we're fired up, man, today. Yeah, it's good. Right. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. All right. So so then also, so we've just come into the new year. Okay. So it's, there's yeah, already okay. this stuff, you know, as a, as a you know, as, as me, as Davey navigating the world, I've already got all this stuff going on in my head. You're thinking about friends. You're thinking about your community. You're thinking about yep. tribe. You're thinking about building out this thing. And then you come into the new year. And the start of this year, for me, was arguably the most clear I have ever been about what I want out of life like i we spoke about it i did all this goal setting i really took like two yeah, or three days yeah the new year's resolutions and quite something the resolutions yeah. and, it, and it was like the three words that like describe who i am and what i want to live super super clear and then people rise out of nowhere and try to attack your moral compass they try to bring you down like and it's when it happens to you and you're so clear on things you can see it way easier than what i probably would used to some of this sort of stuff that i've had that have unfortunately has happened to me over the weekend yeah which we're not going to get into it is a it is a massive massive learning curve because you instantly see it for what it actually is you start seeing the the lies you start seeing like what actually is this thing that's happening and what does it mean to me? Like, is it bringing anything to my life? No. Like, what are these people doing? You know, there's a lot of people out there, man, that maybe have a little bit of, I'm going to say jealousy, but like, what actually is the motivation behind a personal attack, behind creating narratives, behind lying to people, behind trying to like really damage my character within my okay group. so without going okay. into details so what sort of what sort of confrontation um what sort of uh things happen so you, yeah. so basically you've had some shit talking should we should yeah, I had some shit that? talking yeah I had some shit talking mate I had some shit talking and these and the people that do the shit one, talking it? it's a uh, it's an online shit talking it's a uh, it's not and and I, and I want to be very careful here because it's nothing to do with the podcast it's nothing to do with it's literally yeah me like it's not anything to do with this but it's like it's a it's an online shit talking it's a like it's a gossipy narrative creating lie that yeah. someone's been spreading about me and these negative people man they get in your head they get in your head even though you're so clear and you're so like focused on what it is that you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve and the way that you want to live my moral compass is pretty fucking good man like my moral compass is pretty good. And I think when you have a podcast as well, it's very difficult to hide and it's very difficult to be someone you're not, right? Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to think that anyone who listens to this podcast and has listened for the six or seven years of me talking could probably go, I could smell a rat here if this guy was a fraud. Like if this guy was like just playing a character every week. I agree. You could probably figure it out, right? I agree. You just get that feeling, don't you? I, I feel like you do anyway. Yeah. I feel like you do. Yeah. It's hard to hide really, isn't it? I think. Yeah. And, and these people out there, man, that are, are out there and they're living a life that is just purely trying to um, show off to people. It's It's creating a highlight reel on Instagram and stuff like that. And it's all trying to like, cover up what's really going on inside do you know what i mean and again i yeah. think when you get older you get a little bit wiser you start to think a little bit more critically you can start really seeing these people you can start seeing them for who they actually are yeah right and they don't bring anything to your life and it's and it's a time where you just go you know what 
done. Like, game over. Yeah. Numbers blocked. Peace out. I'm over it. I think it's so a good it's way to it. be. Yeah, I think so. And also, it's like when I think as well, it's like, you know, because of social media, you do see like what people are doing. And, and when people start seeing that you may be trying to level up, maybe you. Just maybe, you're trying, dude. People don't know. Trying. Like yeah, just you're trying. Yeah. Maybe you built something that, that can be. Je- they can be jealous of like well, it's a, it's like right let's try and drag this guy back down i've got like, a question try... for you at what, at what yeah. point do you feel that you uh became wow. self-reflective because i think um great question love that uh, yeah because I, th- I think uh if someone said to me ollie you're immature i would i would largely agree i find farts funny i can't help finding farts funny if someone falls over as long as they're not hurt, that's funny to me. Um, what yeah. other immature things? I think about <laughs> stuff in a, in a childlike manner at times. Yeah. I like to ride my bike a lot and scream and shout and all of these things. But the, the, the one thing I would say is that self-reflection, mm, myself, thing. levels of self-reflection or just awareness. You know, I, I, yeah. I think reflection or awareness is probably the right terms. But they, they those things 100% have... Um, I have uh, matured in in that sense, and mm. in a way, the more the more aware I become, the more cool I am with being with laughing at farts with yeah. fart noises. The more the more yeah, hundred percent. The more at peace you are with what you actually are, and you're yeah. not trying to play something that you're not. And that's the really beautiful thing. And and it's it's you know you do start building this moral compass. You start building this way that you want to live your life. How you want to project out into the world. What you want to do. Do I want to raise money for charity? Do you want to build communities? Whatever it could be. But you build this picture, and it's like this is actually good. Like it's a positive impact on lives and people, right? Yeah. So for me, when I first became really aware of this stuff, or more aware, it was probably first discovering podcasts, and actually, you know. Before, before sort of listening to a lot of Joe Rogan, I hate saying his name because people are like, oh, yeah. Joe Rogan. <laughs> it, is, is. You know, it is what it is, right? So like before that, you're in this little, your own bubble, which is fine. You're in your own bubble. But then you start discovering different ways to think. You start discovering different people, you know, that you wouldn't, you know, as a, let me try and think. It's probably started listening to podcasts nine years ago. So I'll have been 20, late 20s, right? I didn't know who, I didn't know Joe Rogan was for, for a start, but like, I didn't know who someone like, I'm trying to think of a good example, Duncan Trussell was great. Uh, he, you know, yeah, him, his good, podcast yeah. with Joe Rogan is was one of the ones that really like flicked a switch in me and they were talking about, yeah. I remember it clear as day, talking about like the way you want to live your life and like if, if you're doing something you don't enjoy, like you should start trying to build out something to get out of that thing and do something that you do want to do, etc. Which... Sounds super basic, but at the time was like, ah, you can do that. Like you yeah. can, and it's like all these different ways to start thinking about life, and you start learning about introspect introspection and thinking about other people a bit more, and like maybe you start learning from spiritual people, monks, for example. I don't know. There's all these opportunities to learn. So for me, it was like it was podcast, dude. Podcasts sent me on this learning journey which I've been on for the best part of 10 years of trying to listen to other opinions, of trying to yeah. live my life a different way, like all this sort of stuff. And it's, it's crazy to think that none of that stuff would have ever happened if it wasn't for this little thing going into your ears while you're doing long drives across countries. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, that's I remember cool. it and I've just been like stoked. Like I remember, you know, you see a new episode of Joe Rogan come up on your phone and you're like, yes, like three hours of like learning, of, yeah. you know what I mean, of, of other opinions and of different ways of thinking. So, and then I've really taken it like personally, like quite far of like always been quite introspective. Like I've learned about myself that I do need to have time alone. I do need to go out and, walk the dog for a couple of hours and just think and just like process stuff and whereas before I think you know you're on the come up a little bit when you're in your early 20s you're just thinking like I just need to earn money and I just need to buy things and I just need to project this image out and then you start discovering you know what none of that shit matters right no matter what you buy if you're not happy you're not happy it's as simple as that you can buy boats you can buy whatever it is cars vans trucks fucking houses if you're not happy, you're not happy. Yeah. If you're not living a moral life that sits well with you, 
then yeah. you're living a lie and it's 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 a horrible way to live because it's anxiety filled it's nasty and it's it's not nice so, yeah, yeah absolutely that, there you go i I, yeah. I find it really interesting actually um like what, what about you when did you first become when do you think you first became a little bit more like self-aware of what ollie what this ollie actually is and what you know what i mean i don't know my, my mum my mum's very good like that I would say my mum, my mum, um, I remember like bullet points of things that she said uh, that have been like, and, and obviously I would probably misunderstand them at the time. And now looking back in hindsight, you, you sort of see if your life is a, a line, you know, I remember my mum saying um, someone said something horrible about her. This is at like primary school. And I remember being really upset and being like, I can't believe they'd say that about my mum. You know, obviously your, your mum's, your, your parents are like your heroes, aren't they? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she was like, didn't know what was wrong with me. I was sad. And, uh, I, you know, I can't remember even what it was. It's so stupid. But I do remember her saying, God, I don't, why would I care what they think? And I remember thinking, fuck yeah, why would I care? Why, why? Yeah. She doesn't care. And and when she says yeah. it, she meant it. You know, not like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. you don't know many people, you know your parents and your family. And, and, and when she said it, she meant it. And I was like, fuck, I don't need to care what someone else thinks. So then I probably yeah. took that, you know, young Ollie probably took that quite far in not, <laughs> not caring. I, I, I took it literally like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. have to care. But you do have to, you do have to walk a line. And then I remember not, not you have to walk a line, but you have to not, you can't just, I can't be 100% full on me the whole time because it's, it would be, maybe it would be too much for some people and it might, uh, shrink their experience experience of something or you yeah. know I, I you'd, probably, you'd be single too right you'd... yeah exactly you have to be uh, <laughs> it's give and take and then i remember you know i come back all opinionated especially in my teens and i'd say something and then she's so good at like thinking of it the other way around which is something that i think um when I see in others, I'm quite critical of. Like you haven't thought mm. that the other way around. You know what I mean? When mm. someone says something, yeah. you, you, I, I. That's one of the first things. That's one of the the tools she's given me. That's like the first one. And when yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. when I I notice it in someone else, I'm like, oh, they they haven't thought this the other way around. Mm. I think road rage is often a good example of that. Perfect that's, example, yeah. Yeah, that's something that I always think is like if someone's screaming at you because you've just accidentally cut them up or something, it's easy to clap back and be like, no, fuck you, and you start screaming back. But then, yeah. like you say, you step back and you go, okay, what's going on in their life? Like they literally could have had oh, the worst news that morning. Yeah. It's like, they might be know, 90 years old, they changed. can't see. You wouldn't be exactly. like shouting at someone because they can't see. Um, exactly. my, my, my boss, this is a funny, this is a funny example. My boss, we, we used to get the multi-packs of crisps. We're in the van and he just goes, and like this sounds stupid, but you know when someone, you know someone means it. He goes, what's the fucking point in all of the other flavours? Salt and vinegar is the best. Maybe you agree. But I remember thinking, I was like, well, dude, I, like it was the way he said it, it was with such <laughs> conviction that he hadn't considered that someone else might like prawn cocktail. <laughs> and like, I know that's a stupid example, but it, it is, that is it. He, he doesn't yeah, think, definitely. he's just like, I'm the centre of the universe. He he hadn't zoomed out at that point. I'm sure he's moved on in his life now and he taught me a yeah. lot of a lot of stuff. He He taught me a lot of stuff about working hard and... Yeah. Shit, shit that I, I really think... value, but he he had not considered, dude. He had absolutely no. not. And he used to park his truck with a trailer on across fucking twelve spaces. He was he was going through the the world with him at the very centre. <laughs> You're in the way. Yeah. Get get out. You can forget it. He's parking there. He's doing that. He's having a salt and vinegar crisps. All the other ones are fucking pointless. You're stupid if you like prawn cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> so true, man. Yeah, yeah. it's so true. It's in, it's in, and I think also it's you can find yourself living your life by like these other people's narratives yeah. of what you what they're telling you that you should be doing, and it's it's important. It really is. If anyone's never done that, to take a day or so out and just think about things and write down some. Like that poll check thing that I did was really good because that was an exercise of really projecting like what does your perfect life look like? And it could be like you could be listening to this right now. This sounds motivational. I'm so sorry. But like you could be listening to this right now in a job that you hate. Right. And your perfect thing is flying a hot air balloon. But you've never flown a hot air balloon before. You don't know where to start. But 
there is a way to start doing that. Yeah. Like, there is a way to start manifesting it and to start trying to make that shit happen. And it's not unachievable, right? It's not. But you don't have to live your life by these narratives that you told that you have to live them by. No. You don't have to stay in that job. I know, I know look, people with different circumstances, I know that, I appreciate that, but there is ways out of stuff and you don't have to... You don't have to, um, yeah, find yourself living under other people's rules no. just because you feel like you have to. And uh, everyone's I did that. just I've trying. Been, uh, yeah, it's not nice. You got to get out. You got to try your best. So yeah, I think writing down some stuff. What What's your perfect life? It's it, it for me. It's weird, man. These last few days, I've been like so clear on everything. It's like That's all this good. shit's been happening. Moment Getting, of clarity's nice. You know, yeah, attacked and whatever. It, however you want to describe it, but like. Being able to just go, you know what? No, I'm still on my like timeline. Again, I like to think of it as a timeline, right? Like I'm still on my timeline. Like I've not veered off it. This is these just people just need to go because it's not bringing anything to the table. Do you know? Do you know another thing as well? Like, like all, all of what you've just said is based around you knowing that you're good. Just as simple as that. That you're <laughs> a good person, right? I'd like, like to think so. Yeah, but you you do know, you do know because that's how you you can't even. You can't even trust your moral compass if you don't already know that you're a good person. And, and, and in order to know that you're a good person, you have to think. You have to think about every, everything. Yeah. You can't, you can't yeah. go through... Like, it would be way harder. If, 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 I, if mm. I thought I hadn't considered anything... What what even is life? Like, you just become like a fucking combustion engine. Just fuel goes in and you propel yeah. yourself forwards. You're not like... I don't know if I'm making any sense there, but in order to actually, in order to actually judge anything, whether it's something that you want to do or that you want to put to your name or not, you have to kind of think at, to start with whether you're a good person, and and, that, and that's actually a gift, and that's one that has been handed mm. to me personally by the people around me. That's what having a, a good upbringing is, I guess. You know what I mean? It's what's, it's what's having good people around you too that are actually. Maybe some, you know, good people doesn't mean that they just bow down to you and say yes all the time and like agree with everything. It's people that actually do sometimes criticize you or maybe say, you know, you're doing this yeah, for the right reasons. Or, yeah, what you up Yeah, to? exactly. It's, it, yeah, I'm with you, man. And uh, yeah, I don't want to, you know, blow my own trumpet here at all. But again, I think this, this thing is a good example. Like if anyone's got anything that you think I am or, or you, you know what I mean? Like you think that I'm... Yeah fake or whatever like reach out i'll happily i've always said like i'll happily talk to you <laughs> like you know yeah. i don't i feel like i do live a pretty i do i do feel like i do live a pretty morally good life like i really yeah. do you know and it's i'd and it's, say you can worry less the foundations are good it's, it's, it's good seem you've to thought be pretty about good. things they seem to be it. i've fun. thought about it a lot man i've thought about it a hell of a lot and i've thought yeah. about the, the direction all this is going you know i really have and yeah there's no um yeah, there's there's no regrets on my side at all. I've, I don't owe anyone anything. I don't like. I haven't scammed people. No. Like I'm all good on this side. But totally it's, fine. yeah, it's good to be like that. It's a nice way to be. To you can go to sleep better because you feel lighter. I think. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, do. You and there's been things you don't have to worry about. Of course, there's been things like I've probably said things to people I shouldn't have said. Of course, but like, yeah, I feel like yeah, things are pretty good at the moment, and it's not nice when people are trying to drag you down and. No, Make indeed. you feel like you're something that you're not. Well, so yeah, I want to get that off my it, chest. Like I say, this is like a therapy session sometimes and hopefully <laughs> anyone out there who might be listening or watching this has maybe had something happen in the past and, and can and can relate. And um, yeah, take a step back, look at who's around you and if they're not bringing anything, see ya. Hey, do you know what? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What do you, know, do you know one thing that I find funny is like, and that I'm drawn to, so mm. I'll, I'll admit to this. This is embarrassing. This is like embar like this is like admitting that you like an embarrassing song. You know. So mm. you're. I, I rarely go on Facebook. I go on Marketplace, right? But if I yeah. sometimes log into the app and it puts the you know the algorithm puts like the thing with the most engagement at the top. And my my yeah. Facebook yeah. is trash. It's a. I, I barely know anyone on it because it used to be my athlete page. So I, I have no normal experience okay. of any of it. So it's packed with all of these people that I don't know. Regardless okay. of that, the algorithm will put the one that's fucking popping, you know, the club that's yeah. kicking off. <laughs> it puts that at the top. And quite often, it put what it puts at the top is 
when someone airs their frustration at, or they it's a confrontation or something like that, they'll put that and you, you know the post. If, if you've ever been on social media, you know the post. It's just like loads of chat and then underneath millions of comments. And it's like yeah. someone saying like, I can't believe that someone so close to me would fucking this and that. Whatever it is, it's like shit that I would never do. I'd never put my, my skid mark pants no, out on the never, internet. Uh, no, you never air anything no. out there like and that. And then you no. go through the comments and they've replied to comments and you can build this story. This is someone that you don't know. It's just like it's like creating <laughs> a soap. But, I, I, but there's something that like... Oh, I tell you what draws you to it is the fact that it's on the algorithm. It knows that it, it keeps people. It's not, so I'm not alone. It's clever. Yeah, it's clever. It's it, clever. It, 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 it knows, I'm not, man. I'm not alone. Do, have you ever seen any of that? A hundred percent, mate. Yeah, I don't go on Facebook either. I got rid of that years ago, yeah. really. I mean, I have it. I use it for the uh, the companionship Market, post group a little bit. Marketplace is mint. Dude. Don't even use it for Marketplace, but I probably should. I don't buy things, mate. Like, No, you, know? but you don't have to on Marketplace. They're free. You just got to go and pick them up. It's decent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a fair point. That's a you fair better point. believe most of the studios could be marketplaces. <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> <say, yeah. laughs> <laughs> the cheapest, most sick studio yeah. in the world. Um, no, I don't really use it that much, man. But yeah, you, you do. You do log on, in, and it's the thing that drives the most engagement, which is going to be the top. It's going to try and pull and you it's in. Always that, gonna it's always going to be smart, dude. Gonna be stinky, I always smart. thought this, right? I remember uh, going back to last year or whatever it was when I had my accident, and I was in hospital, and. Uh, I think we had an episode coming up. I can't remember, but I put a, a, so you, you know, you hold your phone against your pocket or something. So it goes black, right? You press whatever. And I just wrote really sorry. I can't remember. It was something silly, like in hospital, we'll keep you guys updated. It was something like that. I yeah, just yeah, feel yeah. like I owe it to people, right? I wasn't searching for attention. Just those few little bits of text got the most engaged story ever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and it's and I was thinking. I remember thinking like, how does it know that like that's what it says? It could have said anything. Yeah. It could have said. And how did the algorithm actually know like what the words were and that it needed to deliver it to people? Or it doesn't need to. It, I, what it is is you put it up and then instantly, anyone that scrolled past it, did reacted to it because they know you and that and they're like fucking hell you know so yeah that's what just in that be. first like bit it's like a wave dude or... yeah it's like a wave so i mean might as well start putting up uh scandalous uh captions on instagram posts because they will do better you could just be like i'm i'm gonna yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know I you, could, you might as well i never really thought about that about like instagram imagine until that every day, post actually, i'm in hospital <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh, you, i can't nah. believe <laughs> <laughs> it's so true I can't I, mate how shitty is it though that we have to live in a society like that that's just all clickbait it's all like mm. one sentence can it hook you in to yeah. give it to, so you'll give it some attention I, I know we are like in that business technically and I appreciate that and it won't change but you, I think you do also have to be quite aware of that's what it is yeah it's but, funny isn't it yeah it is weird that fucking hell that's strange do you know what else is funny is it's like I, I, it's so, it feels so cliche talking about social media, but whatever. Every single person that's listening to this uses it in some way or another. So fuck it, let's talk about it. I um, you think about that moment where you're in bed and you've come off or whatever. Like a lot of people will have just that that might have reached out to you, and I'm guilty of this. If I see that you're doing something fun or whatever, it's not like. Like before you had a constant broadcasted like timeline of events, you might be like, fuck, yeah. no way, dude, you're in New York. Have a wicked time. You might write, you, you might um, message someone if someone tells you that they're there. For, for yeah. instance, I find out you're in New York. I might be like, oh, yeah. dude, you've got to check out blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I, someone told me by voice. Whereas if I just see it on Instagram, it's almost like, oh, he's having a nice time. Davies in New York, wicked. I'll put, I'll double tap that. It's just like such a lazy form, so it makes you less social. It might, you know. Mm. Yeah, I guess it it's called social media, but in a way, it's anti-social media yeah, because, is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Most of what you're doing is just projecting anyway, right? You're just using it yeah. to project this lifestyle yeah. that you live in. That is usually it's just a highlight reel, isn't it? It's literally like a moment in time in that day. The rest of the day could be totally shitty, but yeah. here I am. Like It's so weird, it all weird, of it. And... It is weird. I feel yeah, like we talk about it too much. I want to steer we away do, from talking about it's... it so much. but We do, but it's so interesting. I think every time I do talk about it and think about it and you know, you see people post certain things and you're like, why? Like, 
Would you feel the same about maybe purchasing that thing or doing that thing if you didn't have social media? Would you yeah. still be there doing And I think same with biking a lot of the time, you know. It's, do, do you ever have that? Like you go out for a bike ride and you don't post anything and you think, mm, I should have told people I went riding. I have yeah. that sometimes. Yeah. It's and you're well, like... It's well important it's to me that, that, that most of my bike rides aren't like oh can you film me do this turn it's really important i think because otherwise i think yeah. i'd go mad i think like i don't know how matt pilg um the, the guys that post um large volume that, that, that produce the most content i find it amazing mm. that that they found a formula a way of working it out that it doesn't just make you go mad like it would make me go completely bonkers yeah yeah i think that that formula is to have people who film it and edit it for you yeah <laughs> I think they're friends the, but it'd be so yeah, important they're friends, they're, it's they're, nice to have them around yeah. and you're just having fun every day and it's and like both the cameras are there but both of those all examples have that don't they exactly like, and the really cameras really are just really like nice an extension of that person's eyes basically yeah. like they're having the same amount of fun it's not it's just like literally just something that's like an, another eye like do you know what i mean yeah it's not anything other than that other it's like a, not yeah it's not a weird it's got to find the balance haven't you you've got to find the balance yeah hey do you know i'm yeah. in a very strange um this is very it's very strange right now obviously the the uh the uh studio behind me is no longer my room no. and it's slowly falling apart more and more things are going it's blah 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 but not only that i'm so i'm locked in this room in my brother's flat and uh, yeah. next door in the kitchen, we actually have a guest. We have John O. Jones, the one and only John O. Jones. He's just through a thin stud work wall, but he's just banking in the kitchen. Yeah, he's just banking. He's working. He's had to. He's had to go to work. So, um, so John O. says hi to the companionship. We'll get. We'll get him on properly soon. Uh, That's a great title for the. John O. says hi is a great title. John O. The, says uh, hi. Yeah, John O. Says, says hi. says hi. It's a great episode title. Yeah. You might not use it though because it's got a double meaning for me, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that's, that's very strange, isn't it? It's like when you... Um, do you ever remember when you went over a friend's house to play when you're younger, and, they're, and it, but it's revising? So you go over the friend's house I and you're like, fucking, let's jump on the sofas, let's do this, but no, it's, it's meant to be revising. We actually just went in their barn. GCSE revision, we went in the barn and there was a pool table at my friend's house. Yeah, so, revision, was it? Yeah, so we all just there was like four of us all locked in this barn and we were like, Don't disturb us, we're trying to revise for GCSEs. Just huge pool <laughs> tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I don't yeah. actually remember ever doing that, like studying with anybody. I don't Did yeah, you study? I did No. I really didn't, man. I, I I am that guy that didn't I mean I got through, you know, I think every in my GCSEs I think everything was either a D or an E. So yeah. I was basically a failure, right? And I, and by the time the results came out, I'd already left. Like right. I didn't go and get yeah, my results yeah. or anything. I was like, I was pieced out. I'm like, I'm done with this. I was already well, yeah, across yeah. the seas, mate. Yeah, I was gone. Yeah. Wow, Nuts, that's really. really young, isn't it? When you think back to it. Yeah, way too young, really. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. It's a big learning curve. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't do any of that studying stuff, dude. I really, really didn't. I just got by. I just did it little as not as little as possible i just no, I, I just did it like i wasn't trying to avoid it i just I, I never hand on heart never ever took one day off school no i did i've took I, I skived one day i skived one day and that one day was hilarious because that one day that i skived school was when there i think we were just about to go to war with iraq and if you i don't know if you remember but we had there was like a, a mass protest across the uk where where students were were saying they weren't going to go to school oh, because really? we were going to protest. Yeah, and in Sheffield there was a huge protest, and there was uh, it must have been quite well organised because there was letters going out um, before the protest, like you know a few days, weeks before, or whatever, saying that if anyone skips school to go to this protest, it was like you know you you get suspended or you, you get expelled or whatever. I remember those letters circulating and stuff, and I remember having the conversation with my mum because I lived with my mum at that time about um, this protest, this anti-war protest happening in Sheffield. And that they were trying to get students there, young people there. It's like a young people like thing, like yeah, you know, rise up. Anyway, skip school, went to the protest. Sick. It was so good, man. It was the best day. <laughs> like it was so. I've never done anything like that before. But I remember we were in Sheffield, and uh, you know, there's the three lads, three young guys, me, my mate, two of my mates. You're all glued together. Are you all glued together? Glued to or you? No. 
glued together. <laughs> yeah, glued together. <laughs> yeah, we're super glued together. Yeah. So yeah, well, um, this is kind of like before, I guess, before social media. So it was like, it was organized. I don't know how it would have been organized, but you know, they were meeting at this specific spot and then it was going to walk and it was going to go across this other, through town and blah, 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 blah. I remember getting to Sheffield and we're like, where is this protest? Like, how do we find it? And then you start hearing the chants. Oh, whatever. <laughs> War chant. <Ooh. laughs> no, we start hearing it. And then we, we went there, we found it, and it was like, wow. Like, people have risen up. Like, this is a thing. Yeah. You know, it's thousands of people. And um, unfortunately, it ended up smashing up um, <laughs> a college. That's <laughs> Always, huh? <laughs> it, that's what happened, man. It ended up, it ended up. People might remember this if you're from Sheffield, but basically this this thing was like I, I remember being in this in this um in this what would you call it protest. Everyone's marching, yeah. police police all sides of you, you know, trying to keep it into some sort of like shape and stuff. And I remember being we we're somewhere near the front and the police was like one of the police guys was like over the over the loudspeaker, you know, do not go over the roundabout and then there's a massive load of voices just go over the roundabout yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah and then it, it basically got it went to this college i can't remember the name of the college but people were running around smashing things so were you politically aware or were you just up for a fucking nice day off day off bit of both i think i think the whole you know i actually don't remember i'm really embarrassed maybe that's where i became a bit more self-aware right that yeah yeah, yeah yeah there you go i i no, don't I remember what things started the iraq war and I, I don't feel like we should do a lunch and learn on it because i think it's too nuanced and it'll be we'll butcher it too mm. hard but I, yeah. I actually it embarrasses me but then equally i'm like if you know everything bad that's going on in the world it's not gonna yeah. be I just think that one was, it seemed to be very, um, obviously political, but like there was a lot of people very anti going into Iraq, right? There was a lot of people yeah, protesting. There was a lot of stuff like, you know, going against that. And yeah, for them to be organizing protests and stuff were, was, must have it must have been a thing. Again, I, I'm, I'm an idiot. I don't remember, but I, I do remember it being like, oh, day off school. Right, this isn't school. a lunch and protest, room, but... No. Um, Please, no. <laughs> It, the Iraq war, I thought we could do, maybe we should just look at why it happened. Oh, see, again, as soon as you look, you see it's just too. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I let's not. Well, let's what, not. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the Wikipedia page because it's got lots of, um, it's been edited over time. It gradually weans out the opinion bits. Yeah. I think so. Um, the Iraq war was protected armed conflict in Iraq from 2003 to 2011. Just think how long that period of time yeah, is. Been, you know? I'll have been 14, I think. So that's about right. That's like, that's when I remember it happening. Yeah, definitely. A little, you know, starting to think for yourself a little bit around that age, right? You're like, yeah, it makes me so sad that like generations of children, you know, like that you could spend your, from when you're three to 11 in war. Like what that look actually looks like, the practical, like actually what that is day to day, mm. you know. Mm. Um, it began with the invasion of Iraq by the United States-led coalition that overthrew the Iraqi government of Saddam Hussein. The conflict continued for much of the next decade as an insurgency emerged to oppose the coalition forces and post-invasion Iraqi government. So it doesn't really say what started. This was the... Weapons of mass destruction, right? Was it not? Yeah. Went um, looking for weapons of mass destruction. I'm not sure any was ever found. I don't know. Okay. Again, so the United again, States based its rationale. Me, the, I don't have one. No, no, I don't either. And I feel like you have to say it every three seconds whilst you're talking about this shit. <laughs> uh, the, the United States based its rationale for the invasion on claims that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, and it posed a threat to the United States and its allies. Um, I think it was it was the nuclear aspect of it. I think that was like maybe you know weapons of mass destruction. I guess that means nuclear war, right? That yeah. Means nuclear bombs. And I think that was like the major first time that maybe my generation had had, had been yeah made aware of this nuclear thing Threat. that could literally yeah end a country. <laughs> you know, and that's cool. It's good. I mean, before social media, young people rose up, made a stand, it's, made the voices yeah. heard. And I was right there, mate, like Che Guevara. <laughs> there you were. <laughs> there I'm you at the were. front of the thing. 
<laughs> oh, that's well good. Well good. Did it? Yeah, man. I can't even Very remember good. what we're talking about. I completely lost my. Uh, no, train tell of me about. Um, I want to know about your weekend. I seen you went over Dovey. Oh, dude, I did indeed. Yes, that's on my notes. That's on my notes. So, me and uh, me and a, a killer group of people went over to Dovey, North Wales. It took us six hours, dude. I'll be honest, six hours is that's tough, isn't it? We had just six hours are long. The problem with long journeys is just there's so many opportunities for more delays. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. the the chance of you coming into traffic is. I think it's. I think actually from the Surrey Hills, it probably is only a four and a half hour journey normally, but it took us six hours anyway. Uh, yeah. We went to Dovey to uh, the Athens Bike Park, and we had um, yeah a rad time. It was like. It's so, I feel so lucky to get to. So, first of all, Dan Afton genuinely is one of my favorite riders of all time. He's one of the most talented all round riders, which I, yeah. I really like. Like, you can ride, you can ride trails with Dan, he's going to be really good. You can ride e bikes on a downhill bike with Dan, he's going to be really good. You ride four cross track. He's just like really, really an amazing, technically gifted rider. And it, yeah, every time I ride with him, it blows, blows me away. Like, he's got to be. 40 now and he's just so fast so gnarly yeah really. yeah i'm a big dan atherton fan like, yeah. i really am i really am a big dan atherton fan actually i think what i also like about dan atherton is he seems to keep himself to himself he's one of these guys right he's just doing it because he loves it yeah absolutely yeah he's out there building bike tracks building trails doing it because he loves it right it doesn't do much social media stuff no. he's just doing it you, he you does, know he, he loves he's it. the real deal a, a, a full a full on uh a real rider's rider, I feel like, Dan is. A lifer, I think. I'd yeah, call he is, yeah. At this point, right? Yeah. And, like, oh, following him makes you feel really crap at biking. Or, like, especially him on a downhill bike. Because, like, there's a lot of fast tracks. Fast tracks aren't really my uh, forte because I live in a very, <laughs> an area of very small hills. So you never really go up to high speed. And it always becomes super apparent when I go to a bike park and mm. watching Dan just like play around and I'm like holding on, you know, he's just like messing around. Wow. And Brent That's Bren's great. the same as well, but just Dan for some reason is just like, I guess it's his bike park, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there is an element of that, but there's yeah. also an element of just raw, natural <laughs> talent as well. Dude, do you know, yeah, you got any footage yeah. or did you, did you get some footage we can throw? No, it was too cold and wet. Yeah, yeah, I've got some. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it through. But it was it was really cold and wet, tough conditions. Um, top riding, like it's a really good place for that because the ground deals yeah. with it so well. But yeah, I couldn't get anything I think done. it's fair to say that Dovey, it's, it is Dovey, I always don't yeah. know how to sell it, right? We're going to go with Dovey, is arguably one of the best places to do biking in the uk would you say absolutely i've got that written down i've got that written down and let's move on to it in a second um because i reckon it'll make a good clip but i what i wanted to talk about first which i thought was really cool so imagine a young dan g and rach before they were you know they were in devon riding bmx track um yeah. imagine their wildest wildest dreams like a Jurassic Park like piece of land with a big log banner. You've got a cafe, you've got an uplift, you've got as many tracks as you want, you can build as many as you want. You live there, right? You go up, as you go up the uplift, you get to the top, back, like bigger open hilltop. You look up above, there's like G's, G's ridge line. You can see them all as you go up the hill. It, dude, it is exact, it, it's so cool what they've achieved. You know they've got they've got titles to their name. They've got a bike brand that's just down the road. Like I was just thinking about how cool that must be to, and I doubt any of them sit back and actually just think, "Fuck, actually, you know what? We've really killed." Oh, I hope they do. I hope, I hope they, they do. do, but I don't think they do. I think that I think okay. they're amongst it. They're all motivated people, but I, I think um, there's not a cooler example of uh that's so true mate. you know what i mean just imagine being i mean we 12. used to do it as a kids right we used to, exactly like what is the perfect thing that you want you own a mountain you, you literally you yeah own you literally a mountain. start drawing trails you're drawing a cafe bike shop you want yeah maybe even uh, about the energy drink sponsor bike brand every person that it. goes on their uplift in their land rovers up their hill 
looks up above the bike park and sees this wild line that's in a video that's gone viral around the world. Like, I, there's just something so cool about it. And then on their down tube, they've got their own family name. Like, that, that is... If, if, if you need something to get you hyped up and you're, and you're a, a young rider up and coming, the sky is the limit. See what the Athens have done. It's, it's fucking unreal, dude. Unreal. So, round of applause to the Athens. Oh, that's a great mate and i love the energy that you brought to that little, little segment right there and honestly i love I it because you've got it, the you know, hair was... standing up on the back of my neck <laughs> like my it. arms i'm like fuck dude you're so right like you're so right that they have carved this perfect you know this perfect yeah. career the, the career is great the videos are great the content's great I, rachel's a great mum. like all this sort of so stuff cool is, yeah fucking brilliant man like it's so cool yeah, yeah it's like you're amazing. in a cartoon Rage, when you go Rage. there like rach turns up on a moped with a kid on the, with her kid standing in between you know just just yeah, bombing yeah. around sight or whatever and yeah wow. I, don't, I don't know and then g g popped in and it's good to see him i, I just think it's We're amazing get an after in, in studio that'd be great because talking it would about be great this, yeah really, I don't think I've ever had an Atherton on no. here before. I don't think so. Never done it. We've never done it, and I'd never done it before either. Oh, Talking it'd be to great to. It'd be great to. I reckon. Yeah, but let, let, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. That's a Definitely. twenty-three goal. I'm up for it. I'm going to try and get Dan over because Dan's a big. Um, as I say, he's a real all-rounder and he's a real trails fan. Like he's amazing at riding trails. He's got real pull-up, and I'm, yeah. I, I really, really, I've. I've said to him over and over again that I'd love to ride some of the um, London spots with him because he'd just love yeah. them. And yeah. I think it, uh, I, I really want to try and get that done this year. This summer, I'd love to get Dan Afton down for a trails tour. Trails tour. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah great. I, yeah, I love it. Big fan. Yeah, little studio guests as well. It'd be so sick. Wouldn't it? Yeah, it. wouldn't it? So we spent yeah. the first day in the bike park. Um, I'm with Bren. Bren's trying to get... Uh, uh, time in on his downhill bike he's he, you know I, I, he uh it's what we struggle with where we live and yeah so any opportunity for Bren to just spend some time going really fast on a downhill bike he's up for it so we spent the day in the bike park um banging out laps and then that evening we'd all bought down there was um how many of us was there there was six of us and we'd all bought down two bikes so we bought down our bikes for the uplift and then we bought down our e-bikes because dan has a i don't know if i should really even talk about it i don't know if i'm uh, yeah whatever it's like an erzberg emtb loop i think they're trying to open it up to public at some stage but it's not there yet but anyway we we rode the erzberg emtb loop and it's uh and it was like howling north wales uh wind <laughs> up the top of the mountain like um and it, it was amazing. proper. It's got some gnarly technical sections. It was super wet. Um, and I think Dan's renowned for building some really like gnarly, difficult, proper mountain biking. And uh, it, it was such, it, it was so cool. It was so opposite to the Surrey Hills where you do lap, 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 lap. It was like mm. giant climb, giant climb, windy conditions, get to the top. And then not like one of the longest descents in probably in the uk you know it's really really yeah. long it's uh yeah it, it, so that was rad we then went um we went to our, our accommodation and we had booked the wrong night so we were just stuck and i thought this was interesting actually we went into mac and uh i found a place and uh, it was What's mac uh, the local town i can't remember what it's called it's called like <laughs> Oh, uh, some okay. Welsh word that I can't pronounce. I really struggle with Welsh words. I'm not very good at it. Yeah. Shout out to all our Welsh listeners. Dude, there was this. So we, we uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe I can help me out. <laughs> McLinneth, something like that. I don't know. Maybe it could be. And uh, so there was an Airbnb property and I just thought how cool a business it was. Like I called her up and she's just like, oh yeah, we're not in, but they yeah, just go through the blue door or whatever. So that just, and, and wire me some money. So it was 25 quid a night. We went in this just like, it's just a hostel. It's just a, all right, yeah. Above a barn, they've just made the most of this storage space above a barn, so we all just stayed there. It was quite good. Nice. That is cool, actually. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, I, I like it. I'd love to have something like that where you yeah. can just leave it, leave it, and just like let people come and go. Yeah. Sorry, I just got a little bit distracted. It started snowing up north. Did it? it snowed here. Snowing now. 
That's what I mean. It's, like, that's why I got a little bit... I'm like, is that snow? Yeah, it's snowing. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What the hell? It snowed here last night. I couldn't believe it. Literally five minutes between my house and here. I came yeah. up the road and there's snow on the car. It's bizarre. Madness, isn't it? Crazy. So, yeah, that was 25 awesome. quid a night. That's called um, Toad Hall. If you're ever in the Dovey area and you want the cheapest accommodation going, go to Toad Hall. Okay. There you go. We're doing a little shout out as well, are we? <laughs> did you get it yeah. for 25 quid? I did. I didn't, no, I, I didn't do it. No, this is a genuine <laughs> shout out because I feel like people, like, I don't know, any more people we can bring to Dovey, the better. Yeah, it's really sure, cool. Mate. Yeah, that's. I've never been, you know. No, it's on the list. To, yeah, never, for sure. It wouldn't be that far it. for you either, would it? Mm, don't know. Still far. I mean, it's, it's still far. Yeah. Um, it's a long way. Right. So, what I wanted to talk to you about is the UK's okay. top five bike parks, and I'd like to have a discussion with you about the UK's top five bike parks. After just v- visiting Dovey, it got me thinking: what's the? It, we should be able to come up with a top mm. five, no, in no yeah. particular order. But we sh- we, we've got to be able to come up with them because I'm really aware that I haven't been to every single one. Um, I haven't. I don't travel around a lot within the UK. I'm much, I'm, I I have much more knowledge <laughs> elsewhere yeah. than I do here. So, okay, first on the list. You know what? Dovey. You know what I've I'm just interested been there. in? You know what I'm interested in? Yeah. It's like where, obviously, where the bike parks are mm. because I feel I feel like where I live, especially Sheffield, where we don't have a local bike park. Like we don't, it's not, we don't have one. The closest proper bike park to me is Leeds, which okay. is, it is a bike park, of course, but it's not like a bike park. Where I was well, it's good it's you bring this up. I'd say it's more of a community project. Yeah. So there's tiers of bike parks, aren't there? Cause I've got some, I've got some yeah. of my favorites are like, you know, Rogate, um, Wind Hill, just little Sandy Hills, they're bike parks, yes, but they're, they're, I would say they're a lower tier than one of the, uh, not a lower yeah. tier, but they're, they're just a different thing. They're, they're, they're a smaller hill. They're just a, um, yeah, like you say, more community-based and community, yeah. you wouldn't travel community six project, hours necessarily to just to ride one of those, I wouldn't have said. The, no. the top bike parks may be like, let's say, lift-assisted or uplifts. This okay. is what I'm trying to Fair. I'm trying to I'm trying to picture what sits in the top five. So you can't. Okay, I've just talked about Dovey. Dovey's definitely on the list. Um, you've got Dovey's a, definitely on the list. You've got a big hill. You've got a load of different tracks. Um, it's got kind of that sort of all weather surface on some sections. So there's always going to be something running. You don't need to worry about your booking. You're safe even when it's raining. I would yeah. say Dovey's definitely on the list of the top five, the UK top five. For sure. And the, Dovey's definitely definitely up there. Yeah, I'd say bike, um, bike Park Wales. We, it's it's yeah. it's one of the it, Bike Park Wales is one of the biggest ones. It's got the most tracks. It's got an uplift service. It's got a cafe. It's a full day event. Maybe two days you could go to these spots. That's probably a good way of measuring the top five bike parks. Yeah, isn't that's it? true. Actually, that's a true. That's a good way of doing it for sure. I was just again sorry. I'm just trying to Google in the background like a map of where they are. Yeah, maybe that's uh, something in the tiers. Like you could spend multiple days because. You probably spend a day at at this next tier down. They're brilliant. They're what, what constitutes most of my riding. The the smaller bike parks, but mm. the bigger ones, I feel mm. like you could spend a couple of days at, which is what I've just done. Yeah, yeah. So no, you're right. Um, so I think okay, I think if we yeah okay, tier one, we got our Dovey, we got our, our bike park Wales. They're like up there. They're setting the standard, aren't they? Really, and also the standard as far as. Like the market inside of it's fucking amazing as well. Yeah. Let's be honest. You know, everyone goes, everyone posts about it, etc. Absolutely, it really matters. But they do a great job of promoting mountain biking. Yeah, really absolutely. Positive light, right. Um, Revs okay. Revolution Bike Park. That's another Rest in peace. another spot. Absolutely, it's a it's a nearly closed, unfortunately. But that would have been in the top five for me. So we got mentioned. Feel like them. it is closed. Is it not closed? Yeah, or closed. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, probably is closed now. Actually, yeah, now now that yeah. this is out, this is out, yeah. Honorable mention. Honorable mention. <laughs> I think it still counts. I, I do think it does. Um, okay. It, it has to because I think it's one of the spots that you go to, and it's it's like a loss to Dovey as well because people would go and do one day at each uh, of the North mm. North Wales big bike parks. They they had loads of tracks again, and there's an uplift service, and you could spend a load of time there. Um, mm. Fort William. I feel like we can't not mention Fort William because it's actually one of the only list, lifted uh, spots. True. 
Yeah, it probably is. You're right, actually. You've got yeah. a World and, Cup and, and track, you you've class, got the red. You class that as a bike park? I'm, excuse my ignorance, but that's a bike park, is it? I'm going to say yes, because there's a range of tracks. There's a blue, a green, a red, a black. Um, it's all mm-hmm. lift-assisted, and there's a cafe. There's facilities. It, it runs um, yeah. season long. I, I, I think if you talked about the UK in general, you'd have to... You know, yeah, you're right. Fort Island, Williams I feel like there, Fort Williams in there, yeah. Then it made Fort me, Williams then it there. made me think, right? What ones do we squeeze in? Because that's that's four yeah. of the big bike parks. Um, I'm, I struggle to think I'm missing any. I think that is correct. I'd say we've got the four biggest. Is that four? Yeah. If we if we're leaving revs in, we're at four. Yeah. Let's leave I revs think, in just for. Let's leave revs in. I think another one that I think probably should be on there if we would be. You see, I really like it when you know, an athlete opens a bike park because they know what makes a good track. Yeah, I know they what you're going to say, yeah. yeah. We're gonna, I'm going to go with Hamsterley. Yeah, that's the Danny Hart. Go Hamsterley. That's the Gravity Danny Hart park. downhill descent bike park. I've never actually been. Called. Is there an uplift that runs there? There's an uplift? Yeah. I've never been, but I've seen it. I've never been. Like, I've, I've been up that way a lot, but I've never been to Danny Hart's descent bike park. Yeah, you make a great um, point. I think the an, another one, like... Another one that's probably on the that kind of uh, top five trajectory, yeah, yeah, might be like um, Black Mountain, the uplift service there, the number of tracks. Yeah. Like it's another sort of location. I don't know if because uh, I haven't been to Danny Arts, I don't know if it's a fair comparison. But uh, no, I think what's also interesting is when you've got these bike parks or facilities that are that have got a lot for a lot of people for different people yeah. so it can be like a literally a barrier to entry with a really steady nice red that's really fun and like makes you super excited yeah. so i'd say uh for me one that one that i did actually really enjoy when i went there was the um oh god it's oh it's a wind ladder what's it called wind ladder? um could be it's up that way i can't remember the name of it is there an it's uplift? probably got a name is that no there's not an uplift so that Again, isn't good. I think it's this, that, dude. I think that might be the top five slash six bike parks in the UK, with a bit of waffle be. in between and conversation. I'll be honest, we didn't really quite yeah. get to the point, but and I, I think it's probably important to throw this out to our amazing community and listener base. Let us know in the comment section yeah. where is the best bike park in your opinion in the UK. What makes it a great bike park? And let's give them a little shout out. Let's try and get some more attention on these places. Oh, let's hear it. Yeah, I'd love to. Let's hear the podium picks for bike parks in the UK. Oh, in the comments that's a good below. <laughs> podium pick. Top three. Time for an ad break. I have a question for you, Davey. Please let me hear it. Can you tell me what this sound is? I think you're going to know. I, I do think you're going to know. All right, you ready? Oh, mate, that sounds like my worst nightmare. That sounds like unoptimized days in the future. It's exactly that. Do you know what that, that what that represents to me mm. is I'm not nutritionally complete. No, I don't have that's... 75 of those vitamins, nutrients, and probiotics yeah, in my and system. Prebiotics. prebiotics every day. I don't have them. No, no, you're not. You're not. That's probably what your insides sound like a little bit too. They're just rattling around. They're not complete. They're not. It's not a complete nutrition package. Exactly. I've okay. run out of Athletic Greens AG1. All right. Well, what do I do? Thankfully, I just got a little delivery just landed right now. I want to show you a little bit of what you could get if you take advantage of our offer. I'll just give please, you a little. Please, little, please. Can little we teaser. do good? Let's do unboxing. So here good. it is. This is what's going to land at the door if you take advantage okay. of the uh, Ride Companion offer. Okay, so that's looking like this. That's an AG1 box. He's opening yeah. it up you to our audio it. listeners. Oh, there you go, mate. You're going to get a bag. Of athletic greens. That That's lasts right. you a month, right? Solid month, mate, yeah. You're going to get the shaker bottle, which is lovely. Really nice quality. Very useful, yeah. Yeah. You're also going to get in there, which we don't have in this box, a tin, the metal one that you showed, and the lovely little metal spoon. That's Ooh, dope. Lovely, yeah. What else are our listeners going to get if they use our code? Yep, you're going to get a, uh, a year's supply years, of vitamin years. D3. It's just in a tincture, super easy to take. And then we're also going to throw in five free travel packs and these are amazing dude i've been using these quite a bit especially been out and about a little bit more recently on the road i take the travel packs with me you know 
mate, you're in and out of hotels, you're traveling, you're not getting good quality food, you're not getting good quality nutrition. Yeah. You rip the top off this, you pour it in the either in your shaker or in a glass of water or whatever. There it is. 75 vitamins, minerals, nutri- nu- nutrients, pre and probiotics. Just like that. It takes all of the guesswork out of supplementation. It does, it does. And there's no better way to start your day than with AG1. That's for sure. I've been, I've been taking it every... Well, I've now run out. Yeah. Thankfully, I've got more on the way. But I've been taking it every single day since. And I, I really like it as part of my daily routine. And I think as well, dude, we're coming into a new year. It's something we've been discussing in the podcast of like making some new goals. And I think one of those goals potentially should be making sure that you're hitting those nutrition goals, right? I think Absolutely. maybe you're going to start biking more. You're going to try the street challenge that we forgot to launch. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I think just it's just a good one to kickstart the new year off with, man. Especially after, you know, you come out of Christmas as well. You've been eating terrible food, probably eating too much chocolate, drinking Corona, Disserano, trying to make Dr. Pepper out of two things which obviously don't taste like Dr. Pepper. Why not make sure that you've got athletic greens in the cupboard and you're going to hit all of those nutrition profiles that you should really be having, right? Absolutely. Health is wealth, right? Health what does, is wealth. What does that normally look like? Normally that, that looks like a load of different pills, supplements, little bottles yeah. jangling around in the cupboard. You've got to remember to take each one or reorder each one. With AG1, you just do one drink in the morning one scoop and you're done for the day done so So, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine the athletic greens is going to give a free one year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase go to athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion that's athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion that's right for your one way stop to optimization. I stumbled on my yeah. words then. I'm not optimized. I, I no, need, you're not. I need you can that tell that thing's run out. I'll be honest, you can yeah. tell it's run out. Me, I'm firing. You know what I mean? Exactly. My brain's got all the things it needs to be going. You know, I'm ready to go. I'm going to go for a bike ride after this. And that's all because I've been taking nutritional uh, athletic greens. It's as simple as that. There you go. Athletic greens, AG1. Big thanks. Big up. <laughs> Just like that, we're back. Best ad break we've ever done. That was an incredible ad break, wasn't it? Really good, really wasn't good. it? I'm, I'm into that. Fired up after that. Yeah, me I'm too. Fired up. Cheers to that ad break. Yeah, cheers, cheers. cheers. <laughs> Look how much did you? I'm on the heavy electrolytes today. Are you? What? What? What are you on? The peak peak supplements. Peak supplements. Heavy electrolytes. I knew it was. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 uh, urine, the urine has been a little bit bright so i'm trying to really hydrate i did a yeah. long run for the first time on saturday i've not done a long run i've not done any running yeah how was it but i got out there man it's good i needed i needed to clear my head dude i felt a little little bad so i was like right that's and, and again you know we know we spoke about the start of the show but it's about also building out you know we're talking about being self-aware and stuff but it's like building out this toolkit that you can activate as soon as you feel a certain way yeah. and i started feeling this certain way that i realized and i was like I need to suffer. Oh, mate, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly I the same. With, yeah, I cross country yeah. ride a lot like that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Absolutely. it was like it was a toss up actually. It's like, do I go out on the bike? And I was like, man, it's kind of minging out there and yeah, whatever. And then I was like, I could just throw my running shoes on because that way I haven't done it for a long time and I will really suffer. Yeah, because yeah, I've yeah. Not done it for a long time. So that's what I did. And again, it's nice to be able to um, came back feeling like a different person. Do you know what I mean? Good. It was so good. I did just shy of 11 miles, which is a decent run for me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and also, you know, again, you learn, but like no headphones, just like get out, think, think. Do you do no headphones? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I want to be a bit of a savage, like a bit yeah, Davy Coggins. That's like I'm fucking Davy no Coggins. Right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. I'll no headphones it and get out there. So yeah, it was, um, yeah, I did that. I just feel a bit beat up after that, to be honest, a little bit. And, yeah, uh, that'll do a little it. bit of drink. Not drinking, but I had two glasses of wine oh, yesterday. Oh, look that... out. Here he is. Come on. Push the door. Oh, let's go. What, yeah, what, what, wine do you, what, what, what wine do you drink? What wine do you drink? I want to hear your... <laughs> do, do you know about wine? Do you believe, Do you know a good wine when you drink no. it? 
man, you know what? This is one of those things that I've always wanted to learn about. This is one of those things that I want to be that guy who can get the wine and, and do it a swirl. Yeah. I know you don't like wine. I like to smell it. I like to do it anyway, even though I don't know what I'm doing. I yeah. like to get the wine. The process. I like to look I like to look at it. I want to acknowledge the, the dark red. I want to be like, oh, it's a very nice dark red. I want to swill it. I want to see Maybe if I can smell it. experience. Always smells like wine. You probably like, look like you know what wine. you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then I like to sip it, aerate it, you know. You do all, give it that, all like, of it. So you look like a proper pro, but you realistically yeah. don't know what you're drinking. And then you'll just say anything and just put like, okay. berries in there. Yeah, yeah. Berries. berries. Berries, I think, yeah, a little bit a little bit of berries in there. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, mulch. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's the moment that you reveal yourself as a fraud. <laughs> oh, it's mulchy, mulchy. <laughs> A bit oh, of peat bog in there, yeah. There's a bit of peat bog. <laughs> what? Um, so, what wine would you? What wine would you buy? I wouldn't even. I don't know anything. Yeah. So this wine. is the stupid People get thing super about into me, it, dude. don't they? Super into it. So I love. Um, I don't spend a lot of money on wine, but there's a wine. This is again. It's all part of the process, right? There's a wine shop by me, which is quite. I wouldn't say it's fancy, but it's just cool to go in. They've got all the super expensive bottles of wine. Yeah. They sell cigars. It's a real like wine shop, and uh, I like to go in there. And I like to, um, I like to think, what country do I like today? And I'd be like, I really like Argentina, and I'll go and buy an Argentina okay, wine. Okay, there you go, there you go. Yeah, and I'll usually try and make sure it's uh, vegan for Emma, so she can have a little bit. What the hell? Because what not it? all wine is. Was that then? Not all wine is vegan. What was that then? How's it not vegan? They uh, often with wine, I believe they um, they filter it through fish skin. I didn't know that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Might have made that up. No, I don't think I have though, man. I, I, I think uh, I, let's, let's so? just do a double check. Do you know what I was yeah. going to say? I went to I went to a vineyard in South Africa with needles, and he was like, uh, he was like, oh, you've got to come to this this one. They got runner ducks. They they don't they don't do any pesticides. They have runner ducks, and then the runner right. ducks they take them on a run down the vineyard every day. And the ducks right. clear out all of the snails, so they don't have to use pesticides. They they eat all of the Fantastic. snails and all of the bugs and stuff. So, but these runner ducks are so cool. Have you ever seen runner ducks? Uh, no, I don't think it I is have, like actually. a breed. Let me let me um, check. Okay, but I think, and I'll just give you a quick a yeah, quick please. reason why wine is sometimes not re- not vegan. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So, I'm ready. The reason why some wine isn't vegan is to do with how it's filtered during the wine making process. After the sugars in the grapes are fermented and turned into alcohol, the resulting liquid is often cloudy in appearance due to the fact that it's a f- that it's full of substances including proteins, tartrates, phenolics, and tannins. Okay, so. Often, uh, according to Petter, non-vegan finding agents used by winemakers include, so this is what they'll use to filter, I believe, blood and bone marrow. Oh, there you Shit, go. Shitting? Shit. Fi- uh, yeah, shitting. It's fibre from crustacean shells. Who the fuck discovered that? Yeah, I, I never understand that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Casein, which is milk protein, egg, uh, fish oil, and gelatin. There you go. Never knew that. Is in glass. Is in glass, which is gelatin from fish, fish from fish bladder membranes. How? <laughs> How? That is so bizarre. What's wrong isn't with it? a sieve? <laughs> <laughs> it's so bizarre, yeah. That those many that, that that many that combination of ingredients does a job, and that it's improved. Yeah. You know, like after they added the fish bladder, then they're like, yeah. should we fucking crush up one of those crabs down there? Give that a go. I know it's not like that. It's just chemicals, but like it feels that way, doesn't it? That's mad. There oh, there you go. you go. Okay, so runner ducks. Um, on to the next uh, oh, wine yeah. related fact. Uh, Indian. <laughs> there is a breed called an Indian runner duck, and they have very long necks. So oh, yeah. there you go. Have you have you got one a picture of one up? I'm looking at one right now. Yeah, I'm looking at one right now. Um, they stand erect can... like penguins. You can buy them in the UK as well. So oh. you can buy a trio of four Indian runner ducks. And they're at, at the moment in Halifax in England, that's going to cost you £50 for the three ducks, mate. Oh, I'd love a runner duck. You've got, how about this one? This I'd one's near you, isn't it? Oh, no, it's Wales. You could have got this. This is in gorgeous ducks looking for new home. Two Cayugas and two runners looking for a home. There you go. Six months, all six months old, free. Wow. There you go, mate. Yeah, Facebook you can get market, a that's probably on Facebook yeah. Marketplace as well, yeah. You can get a runner duck, dude, for the new crib. A studio duck. A studio <laughs> duck would be mint, wouldn't it? 
Right, should we move on to that time of the week that we, we're all looking forward to? The Basically the home of the tangents that we go on. That's yeah. right. It's listener questions. Did we get any? I forgot to put it up until late. Yeah, yeah, we got some. We got some. We got some. I didn't put it up till late, dude. Totally, um, totally slipped my. Um, no, it's good, brain. dude. It's good, dude. I, we never also, need... a quick shout out if anyone knows uh, and can link us up with Paddy McGuinness. Someone might know him. Paddy McGuinness, the comedian, famous for Phoenix Knights and Top Gear, well, come on has recently guess. discovered e-biking oh really how yeah. interesting yeah, a few people have sent me his stuff he's been posting videos out e-biking i'm not sure what bike he's got i can't quite Thank figure you. it out he's got a bike which ain't got any branding on it is he so no likey like no lighty no likey no lighty is that him so he's already met pilgrim maybe pilgrim's got a link <laughs> he goes to my gym when he's down filming he goes to my my gym i'm not joking either I promise you. There you go. I promise there you because you I felt really sorry for him because Pete, you know, the bloke's just probably living out of a out of a bag in a hotel, mm. filming mm. at, at um, Dunsfold or wh- wherever he films, and yeah. um, people coming over to him in the gym. You know, he's just there for like a quiet. You know, he's just trying to run on a treadmill and lift some weights up. And, and people down. are on him, are they? Oh mate, you just watch people everywhere he goes. Is that weird? Like everyone giving him sexy eyes as he walks around, like. Not sexy eyes, but you know, like that. People noticing it's him, and it, it just looks so exhausting. I've got to say, it looks so exhausting being Paddy McGuinness. Oh, the gym. Yeah, and here I am. Like, does anyone know him? Like, oh, no, no, I don't. I don't mean it like that. I just mean I person do. to person. Mean if like you that. saw Paddy McGuinness, you wouldn't go up and whilst he was eating his breakfast or going to the gym, you wouldn't go up and ask him for a picture, would you? I'd feel too bad. No. I'd feel. I've seen it like, like the old gym I used to train at. The uh, the singer of. Uh, bring me the horizon yeah. called ollie sykes right. trains in there same thing it's just time like, in the place it's, there's nothing wrong it's with 5 it, 30 but... in the morning and someone's like can i have a selfie yeah exactly yeah <laughs> he's oh, red-faced oh. and yeah although yeah. well, it must be nice at first like i'm sure you know you've you've had it as sometimes oh it's stuff. lovely like, but oh, just yeah. certain times lovely, i but... feel like and, and, times, and for yeah, him it must situations. be a lot so the times become more important i think yeah, I mean, approach exactly. me at any time of the day. I'm going to be stoked to meet you. But Paddy McGuinness, if he had that mentality, he might be a bit swamped, I feel. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Totally. There you go. Totally. Right, okay. So All right. first question. First listener question is from Craig, Craig's private. Look, his, his account looks so fake, like a... Um... <laughs> this is a scam. Yeah, this looks like a scam. Like, um, Who was your favourite guest on the podcast? That's a that, that's a very good question and very difficult, but probably a good mm. one because we can think back to all the people we've had on because we've had some good ones, haven't we? Some bangers, bro. Had some absolute bangers. <sighs> I mean, for me, in recent memory, Bren Orton was fantastic. Um, Bren Orton was fantastic. Every single guest we have on, we haven't had any clangers, actually for a long time but Bren Orton was um, really good I just think he's a super interesting guy and uh, worth looking into it's a different sport he himself just as a person is a great person so yeah Bren Orton would be my um, my in recent memory my favourite that's a good one really like that can I do three yeah why not yeah please (laughs) All right, I'm going to do three because for all different reasons so the number the first one I'm going to go with would be Geordie Lunn, just because there's, it's like, I was thinking about this a bit when we were talking about Ken Block, like the few days after I was thinking about it, about having the opportunity to put something out there that will live forever, that that's on the internet forever. And Geordie and I sat down, didn't know him. We had, and from what I remember, had a really nice conversation. He was super fucking cool. Right. And um, I remember obviously when we lost Geordie, um, feeling a little sense of like, pride that i was able to put that story out his first ever podcast maybe his only ever podcast i don't know but geordie lund's up there dude like it's that's yeah that's very that's cool definitely a one that i'm really proud of you know mm. the second one i'm gonna go with matt mcduff yeah um just because certain people you do an episode with and they become legitimate friends after uh and matt and i i'd say although we've never met in person we speak a lot yeah that's um, cool and he's, he's a genuine friend. You know, he's yeah, one of those wicked. people that I'd put in my close circle, which is yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. to think, but he is. Uh, and number three, coming in at number three, is going to be Surrey's Finest. 
Harley Wilkins. Oh, it's because look, look what we're doing now. Yeah, tr- all because of mate. That's so true. When you think back to, I'd love to listen. I am res- introspective, aren't I? You are, aren't you? I think. Imagine guy. our first um, podcast. Like we could. That's all out there. We could still listen to it. Yeah, you could. It's right there, dude. It's right there. What a funny the thought. What a funny thought to hear us talking to each other like we don't know each other. Because it yeah. was right. Don't know each other. At it all. wasn't in person, was Not it? The first all. one. No, the first one wasn't. Then we did another one at your house. Yeah, yeah. Um, about Rampage, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, at that point, mate, I was a different person. I, 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 I wasn't even riding. Like I was hating biking. Yeah. <laughs> so, how, how like different trajectory I was on right then, and 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 you, you still on the same trajectory, you're just loving it and for it all the <laughs> how time. How bizarre! <laughs> so that was at my. That was at this flat that we're in, right? On the... Yeah, we sat, sat in the living yeah, room. Yeah, we course, and I yeah. brought some recording equipment and we just sat down and and riffed sick nice dude oh, i'm listening to that oh, i'd love to uh, thanks for shout out not. davey appreciate you dude you're welcome you're welcome um okay number one second listener question boil at 91 polly and davey on moto trials bikes this year i guess you're polly so I'd, um, <laughs> i um i've always thought moto trials would be a fantastic sort of like retirement from hurling myself at trees you know when i see people that yeah. are good at it i just think fuck i'd love to be able to do that but i'm under no illusion that i would be good at it i, walk- I did i did a trial about three years ago yeah. i did a trial did i'm very really? lucky yeah. i have yeah i got some friends uh who run a trials company like a business selling trials bikes yeah, yeah. and trials parts called splat shop no free shout outs you can have one anyway and it's um yeah, basically my mate Tim who runs that, he did this thing a few years ago where he was trying to get all of our friendship group to do a trial because they had like a spare bike and stuff. Yeah. Obviously, I, I was the first because I got a background in it. Some of my friends... Oh, actually, the the edit to this is they were the distributor for, a, for an electric trials bike company. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. It. So obviously I did it on a motorized one, but my friends who'd never ridden a motorbike before just did it on the twist and go electric one. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was weird. I'd, I'd never ridden a trials bike in my life. I was super throttle happy, zero clutch control, um, but got through it. I did all right. I didn't finish last, so that was like nice. cool. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, but yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because although it's motorcycling, and I, you know, I grew up doing that, I wasn't ever really that good. But I spent a lot of time riding dirt bikes and stuff. Was utter shit at it. It was as if I'd never ridden a bike it's a in my life. Thing, it didn't, isn't it? It's a different. Didn't thing. bring anything to the table it wasn't like oh yeah you can ride a motocross bike you can do this you see Warren like, and yeah. ride them that's what a lifetime of oh. doing it is is like like he's yeah. so impressive and it's all like yeah. like you say clutch control and like being aware of like grip but it's grip in a different way it's not gripping mm. like a whacking a turn as hard as you can kind of way it's like grip no. like traction no. like actually like feeling yeah. how to gain grip and totally and taking your time and that's one thing i couldn't get my head around the first because we did one and it went round um it went round a loop twice yeah and the first loop round it it was like a race to me because that's what my head was yeah, like yeah, i was yeah. like well get through this section as quick as you can i'm like super throttle happy just like rah, everywhere and uh and then the second time i was, it was starting to click a little bit and i was starting to figure it out and then it was over um, but yeah, it's snowing like crazy here right now, dude. It's gnarly looking outside this window. So there you go. Moto Trolls weather. Next one. <laughs> okay. Um, one from DVSP. Why is age not a barrier in the sport? 50, 50 year olds and 15 year olds can ride together. Why is it that it's mm. not a barrier? That's a great question. And it's, it is actually, it's mega cool, isn't it? It was one I was thinking about yesterday up at the trails. I was um, up at the trails yesterday and there's kids going down the roller line that are literally on balance bikes. And then there's yeah. adults going through the jumps and doing backflip tail whips. And you just think ev- everyone's there together. And, wow. and then like you push up together and you talk to each other and like it is the exact same thing, which is yeah. is mega cool, isn't it? Like, Yeah, totally. Really cool. And I think... It's, it's tough to put why is there an age barrier it's because it's an inclusive sport i guess it's it's you don't need any really any special equipment you don't need any licenses it's like open to anyone yeah and I th- yeah exactly i feel like you I choose your speed maybe it's like the fact that it's not impact because like running for instance um yeah obviously you see people that are super fit and of a uh of a higher number 
but like mm. uh, of a uh, uh, and people who are older running. But I feel like of a high end number. That's yeah, the best that's way so... to explain age. Yeah. <laughs> of a higher number. I was just trying. <laughs> Whoa. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm of a higher number. But I do feel like you get rid of a lot of people as they get older yeah. in running, right? Because yeah, it just like your stride's different. The whole thing's like totally yeah, different. Like, I guess out of us you could say the same with one of bikes with run. wheel sizes. Yeah, I suppose so. True. But it, but you could yeah you can still ride cross country. It's just a simple pleasure. That's what's so cool about it. This great outdoors. It involves the great outdoors, it involves a bike, and whether you're five years of age or 50 years of age, doing a wheelie, hitting a jump, going around a turn, it's still fun, isn't it? Mate, it's the, isn't it just the best feeling to just cruise down a hill? Yeah. What is it, Don't get old. What is that feeling? That never gets old. You know that if you're out on a bike, no matter if you've just started your ride or if you're at the end of your ride, if you come to a descent just a road yeah you're just like this is so fucking sick just to carve down this road and just like cruise down maybe throw a few manis in just the feeling of just it's like i know it's cliche but i remember that first dose of freedom in it when you're a kid you're yeah. just like the first dose of like i can go i can do whatever i want like that is your transportation is like you can go see your friends totally. you can do whatever you can get across across the, the village or whatever and uh, that feeling as well, it's never gone for me. Like, especially on in that moment of like going down a hill. Yeah. There's nothing, the there's nothing better than that feeling. It's so it? good. Yeah. Do you know what I just thought? Yeah. Uplift chat, right? What mm. One of my go-to questions, whether it's a 12-year-old kid or a 70-year-old bloke in the uplift, I'll always ask them what your favourite track is. And you always get the same response, like, do you know what I mean? So you always yeah. get the same response, and in that response is the reason why it's across age. Mm. That's what I think. Literally, nice. that this nice. like I always find it a bit awkward in uplifts. So you sat like opposite someone you don't know, like all right, sweaty. So you just say what track you on. What's your favourite here? They'll say with the enthusiasm that is required to get you to go down. Yeah. It. It's fucking cool. That's cool. That is yeah. cool, mate. You're right. You are right. Um, okay, next one at Johnny underscore MCC. Ollie, are you going back to Rampage this year with Bren or maybe G? Hopefully, we will Dig be for going higher. back to Rampage. Absolutely. Hopefully, we will. Um, there we go. I, I honestly, I don't know about because last year Bren had an invitation and we didn't go. So this year, I don't know if. Um, if the invitation will still stand kind of thing, because he had the invitation last year because, because of a previous, previous results. I, I don't know because yeah. it did go to proving grounds, but I think it's gone back to just invite only. So they just build a invite list out of the people that they want to have that year. Which I, <laughs> I think, okay. I think it's kind of right for the, for that event because it's not part of a bigger picture, really rampage standalone. Yeah. Has Pil Pilgrim done Rampage? Before? Yeah, yeah. I've I've been at Rampage when Pilgrim did it. It was absolutely brilliant. He was he had no interest. He'd won F and B World Tour that year and he had absolutely no interest in building a line. At the time there was just like a ridge that you could just go down and he just yeah. went down that ridge and then he built built a shoot <laughs> at the end. Him and uh Anton Taylander, they were just chilling in the jacuzzi mm. all day and then <laughs> the last day they built a shoot. That is so That's fun. So he's, he's, it's not his favourite thing, Rampage. Oh, there you go. Right. Um, next one. Lewis Craig. All electric bike or all manual bike? Brackets, including brakes slash dropper, etc. I, I've i got how I... I think it's a really good question. I think um, that is... Uh, I've got my own opinion. What what are your thoughts on that? On that? So basically what he's saying is... Cable would you go or electric yeah. derailleur, for instance? Yeah. Cable or electric dropper? Okay. My personal opinion is going to be go um, back to your roots the whole time. Like you keep it as simple as possible. Mm. Um, I've really had I've really had a little bit of an issue with having that X whatever it's called. What's it called? The electric axis. I've really had an issue with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've really, I've really had an issue with that. Yeah, not that one, the other one. I've really had an issue with it, and 
yeah, I just I just keep it simple. I really like, I like you know gear cables fine. Uh, I think you can overcomplicate everything. I think um, I I'd, I'd much prefer to see a, a future of analog bikes than e bikes personally. I don't know. Oh fuck, I don't know, man. That's a really tough one. Yeah, that's a really tough one because now I'm starting to be like, well, I'm going out e biking this afternoon. Yeah, and I could go on a regular bike, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go on my e bike. It is um, hard, isn't it? There's no wrong answer. Mm. Whatever. I think I, I I sway away from electric things just because I'm a bit of an ape and like if something yeah, goes wrong, I, I feel like I can ape. fix it more. Electric stuff, I just don't quite understand. I I, I don't. I can't yeah. fix if it goes wrong. So then, and also, I'm going to forget to charge it. Um, Done that a few times, you know, literally get the bike out and you turn it on and it's flat. And I was like, fuck, it's been plugged in. I just not turned the plug on. That's, like, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's just it, like, you, there's none of that hassle with the regular bike, yeah. but it's going to be harder. I like the idea that so, in an apocalypse that you can just fucking crack on on a, on a normal bike. Like a bike's a really simple yeah. tool just for A to B, isn't it? Like it has actual purpose. Which I like about. I think an e-bike bike could outrun a zombie. I mean, yeah, maybe. I love the idea of a nuclear e-bike in the zombie apocalypse. But also, mm. what I was going to say is, think how useless a wakeboard is compared to a bike. You know what I mean? Like a bike really has purpose. A wakeboard's just this fucking. Yeah, a wake... <laughs> What are you going to do? Wakeboard away from the zombies? <laughs> Job's fucked, isn't it? You need a, a bike. You need a bike. And if you can get a nuclear e-bike with armor on it, then get that with a plow on the front. I don't know Anything what the else? question was anymore. I've lost. I completely lost track. Uh, it's just zomb- just run away from zombies with your e-bike. Interestingly, some e-bikes, nuclear the, e-bike. uh, like for instance, if they have Shimano Di2 in particular, because that battery mm. is hidden in, they are, they can be plumbed into the actual battery. I believe. What's that? Oh, really? I think I had a DI2. One of my fo- first Focus Jam Squareds it was a DI2 yeah. model, and it had the rear derailleur was plumbed into the main. Plumbed in. I oh, really it was so plugged you into to, the main yeah. battery. You didn't have yeah. to charge it and a separate no, charger. No, exactly. Yeah, which is sort right. of more of go. something that I can imagine for e-bikes because then you've got to charge something. So if it if it just charged mm. everything, then I'm not mad at the idea, but. Well, it's not it's not charging it it's just supplying it with power but yeah one battery source mm. is better than nine which i've heard on a mo- modern bike nine wow. different things you've got to charge too overcomplicated. every shifter every item and the whole thing is about going out into nature and being away yeah, from all this stuff it, that's yeah. kind of like my little you know with my you, little yeah. niggle with all that I'm with you i quite like how mechanical things work as well and feel like you can feel the cable stretch you can go into the gear mm. if, if they're not set up perfect you can push the lever a little bit further and pull the cable more until it goes into gear and then let go you know like bits like that are just yeah uh, yeah yeah you're right i think i'm you're right, you're I, right. I, I feel like that might be i feel like the person that asks that question probably feels the same do you know what i mean mm. yeah i think so as well um next one at homesy 32 thoughts on pilgrim moving to goodyear times hyped Hyped. I think there's another the best question. Best riders demand the best tyres. It's as simple as it that. Is the, the, oh, it's is a there? heavy oh, team one. now. We've got John Boy, who's just actually in the other room here. We've got Matt and we've got Pilk. As well as Unbelievable. Joel Anderson, as well as multitude Max of Mitchell. other riders. Exactly. Yeah, Max Mitchell's on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, not bad. Yeah. Oh, the guest. Uh-oh. I heard my name. Here he is! Hiya! Yeah! <laughs> Are you, you, shall I take my headphones off you halfway through a call? I just heard that it's going to be a good year. <laughs> you, you heard, you managed to actually hear. Was I really loud in there? No, I just know my name. Poor Jono was doing a um, phone call and I worry about him hearing us talk about like chicken yeah. fingering and stuff whilst he's doing serious yeah it's true yeah he's doing like some corporate banking and then we're like yeah. talking about zombie apocalypse e-bikes or whatever it was just a minute yeah, ago yeah exactly exactly oh, that sounds like one I need to listen to yeah right you can hear you can yeah. hear Davey talk yeah Not, uh, whispering whispering very well uh, yeah, you gonna, yeah, yeah. have yeah, you got another one to do or are you going to come in here okay I just, I wanted, just to... wanted to make sure I'll pl- unplug the uh, headphones sorry to interrupt Thanks for star guest, Thanks John O'Jones. We'll put him on the thumbnail now. Why not? 
<laughs> there you go. Yeah, we should like always like call the most famous person in your phone and just like with <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> full clickbait. But yeah, the Goodyear team is yeah. um, going strong. We've got lots of exciting things to come out. I feel like I'm doing an advert now. I've gone all professional, but it is mm. going strong, and we do have exciting things to come. So, so there, so Conor sick. McFarlane. I, that that's you know that's actually what was yeah. bothering me was that I was thinking about the people that. I'm not bothered about mentioning. I'm, I'm bothered about not mentioning someone. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Conor yeah, McFarlane yeah, yeah. as well, yeah. as long as well as loads of other people that I'm sure. Loads of other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. It's like loads of people are buying these tires right now. We got listeners buying yeah, them. That's exactly. the main thing as well, right? People want to know what all the fuss is about. There you go. There you go. Right. <laughs> what's up next? Um, this is a good one from James Cross. Do j- dirt jump bikes actually need suspension forks? Just a great question. It's a fantastic question. Um, wow, uh, Ollie, I think you are. Tra- I, I I know my answer. Like, but it's kind of like a one-word answer, which, um, but it's not going to add any context to this. So I think I'll hand it over to the guy who's arguably trails god. Well, right? I did ride rigids for years and years and years, yeah. and so I would say absolutely. So you're still trying to sell those forks. Yeah, so we're going to still got the last few like- sets of my signature forks, but. <laughs> I would say you absolutely don't need... Obviously, it depends what dirt jumps. If you've got bumpy dirt jumps, you're going to need yeah. some suspension forks. But a good set of trails can be ridden by BMXs, and that would suggest no. And that's the thing here, isn't it? BMXs are riding them. Exactly. And they don't have, they don't have suspension so forks. They, so they, they absolutely and also, don't. Like, you, you don't really use that much of the suspension no, on you dirt pump jump. it up anyway, super hard. Doesn't, you pump it up so hard, it barely shifts anyway. That said, I'm often happy that I do have them. And sometimes when I see in slow motion coming around from something, I'm like, rigid forks was, mm. is a young man, man's game. I did it for years and years. It was almost my, it was my thing. We should put in some pictures yeah. of me when I was younger. Like the bike was so simple. It was, one, it was one step away from being a BMX. It was 24 inches, rigid forks, single speed. Rear brake was a V brake, yeah. you know, like I, I spent a really long time riding like that and probably, well, that was when I was like competing and stuff. I didn't, I never, I don't yeah. know if I even ever had suspension whilst I was competing. I don't think I did, no. Yeah. So, uh, great. Yeah, you know, the best bike, one of the best bikes, man, I ever had was this giant STP. And honestly, I absolutely loved it. You know, when you like, you really just yeah, fought, fell in love with that bike. Like, I rode it constantly, dirt jumps and, and whatever, like street, dirt yeah. jumps, anything. Absolutely loved it. And it was basic as anything, dude. Like one brake, you know, Argyle forks. Like it was just super basic, but it was just perfect. That's it. I hang out with loads of, um, well, tough uh, tough one. Don't quote me on this, but I hang out with loads of kids at the trails. <laughs> okay, so at the trail, how, how can I, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. How can I say it? At the trails, there are lots of, <laughs> Young people who I ride with. What did with. you say before? I am oh, of, of older number. I'm of a higher it? number of y- than a lot of. They're of younger number. They're of lower number than me, <laughs> and they're riding trails, and we talk. Anyway, right. So one of the things that I find heartbreaking about our sport is that we're, we're, we're told so much to that you need this or you need this, and and it's one of the things I absolutely love about dirt jumping because you don't need anything. Don't worry about it. If your bike's shit, your bike's shit. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really make it easier than anything. You can learn everything you need to learn on a really bad bike, and it doesn't have to have suspension forks, and it can have gears. It can be whatever. Just do you. It's it's, it's a real yeah, true totally. part of biking, I think. It's good. BMX and dirt jumping is it's cool. Yeah, 100%, bro. It's arguably one of the best best aspects of biking. Absolutely. Um what we got next? Okay, I've just thought of something. I'm going to spoon. I'm going to talk about shortly. Okay, if that's okay, we'll, we'll wrap on it. At Simon can't see. As Reese Wilson is now sponsored by Head Impact Trauma, are impact sensors the future of safety? Right there, you go. Right. So in order to talk there about this, I'm going to type in Head Impact. So what is yeah, this? Same. I guess this is a um... Head Impact Sensors, uh, sponsored by Head Impact Trauma. So that's the actual brand. I can't find it. Head Impact. No, I can't. Head right. Impact anyway, so trauma. okay, we're gonna have to fill in the gaps here, aren't we? We're gonna have to. Yeah. So I guess it's a Head Impact 
trauma sensor sponsor so it, I, I guess it's the yeah. sort of like oh here it is i found it oh, well i done. found it i think that's i think that's Reese. yeah he's on trek isn't he yeah of course he is there he is okay so it's actually so the actual brand is called hit impact h-i-t um and wow it looks pretty pretty cool to be honest um and this looks like a little sensor Okay, interesting. I, I don't know. Okay, that. all right. So it's a wearable tech and companion app designed to give you live tracking of forces incurred to the user's head when wearing a helmet. Yeah, I think what we have to be mindful of here is we can't say it's not a good thing, right? It's going to be very difficult to say, "Nah, this isn't the future yeah. of head safety," because <laughs> something is, uh, and maybe this is it. And I definitely don't want to be that guy that's like. <laughs> Nah, you shouldn't have these on your helmet. Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah, like, exactly. man up. <laughs> you know, if you can see double, then just ride anyway. Like, obviously, we're not going to say that, but this looks like a really cool thing. Like, yeah, and I, and I dare say, if someone like Reese is behind it, then it can only be. I wonder good, what happens right? when um, you drop your helmet in the car park. Does it? Mm. It's a crazy yeah. thought, isn't it? It's so good that there's this much kind of technology and um conversation about mm. all of it yeah definitely dude and there's um there's one which has got like a gps sensor on which looks pretty cool um yeah i mean good idea it can tell you what i guess they yeah. can tell you when it's time to replace your helmet after a crash um yeah, potentially all yeah. sorts yeah i mean you don't have to hit your head like you don't actually have to hit your head to get a concussion Apparently, one of the worst sports for um, CT is uh, jet skiing, isn't it? Yeah, there you go, there you go, yeah. Constant movement. Um, But I mean, it's just that, like, jerking. I mean, it's just your brain going in and out of inside, moving inside your skull. So, Mm. but so anything, yeah, that that sounds really good. What was the actual question? I can't remember now. Um, Oh, impact sensor. Future future. of safety. I would say that it certainly sounds like it. If they're accurate and they tell you, then they're really good. What was that thing that, um, oh, it must be the same thing. It was in some specialised kids' helmets. Oh, right. Wow. I think. There you go. That's a great and it idea. would send a text That's to good. people or something. I can't remember, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, sounds good. Oh, wow. Sounds right. good. Sounds Not good. the real Rob Warner. TRC Afan Forest Loop when. I would love to do an Afan Forest Loop. That was one of the first trail centres I ever went to, and... Um, Yep. It'd be cool to do a big Keep. group ride. Why not? Let's make it happen. Yeah, let's do it. We do spring, the Spring Invitational. Oh, brilliant. I love the the name as well. Even the name's great. It <laughs> sounds great. The Spring Invitational, and you're invited, if you listen, to the Ride Companion. Yeah, exactly. To this All right, the Spring Invitational. That's we'll good. do that. We'll come up with some cool branding, and we'll have a spring ride, probably around April. It sounds fantastic. That's, is that spring? Can't wait. Yeah, hopefully. I'm looking forward to spring now. Yeah. I'll be honest. Don't want to be there doom and gloom, but I am looking forward to spring. Um, yeah. Only Dan's MTB has asked us what would win in a fight between a lion and a grizzly bear. He's added as a caveat, I'm saying lion. Hmm. Sure, this has happened. Maybe it's not. Let's Maybe that's it never lion happened. versus grizzly bear. Let's type, Let's it, type it in. So this is. I'm gonna say lion. I'm gonna say lion. All that. I feel like that lion's just gonna. It's got more bounce to it. It can get up around the neck area. It, it's got the big talons, not talons. Uh, uh, f- what they call feet? No, not feet, not legs. Um, no, paws, paws. It's got the big fucking Alice. <laughs> it's, <got> a- <laughs> hey, it's got the big paws. stop you there, dude, the because I've just used the internet to get the answer. No. A bear would win in a fight against a lion. Bears have the advantage in just about every aspect from size to offensive capabilities. The only time that a lion would win is if it managed to sneak up and ambush a bear, leaping onto it and biting into its head with such power that it shattered the skull. That's what it says. So there's no That's answer. just one answer. So basically, but... a bear would win, but if, the, but if the lion used a little bit of tactics and snuck up on it, then the lion's going to win. Grizzlies are fucking terrifying, right? A grizzly can weigh nearly twice as much as an African lion. Like, twice as much. When you think about the size of that. Man, when I was in Whistler, people were talking like, oh, there's a grizzly's been spotted here. Like, it's no joke when you see, because they're they're lone animals, but when you see one, like, they're, well, I mean, that's the apex predator, isn't it? It's, It's just... And I think we've glorified, I say we've glorified these animals, but you know, like Disney and stuff makes them look like these, oh yeah, let's yeah, go over and stroke it. It's going to look like blue, but it's, it's different in it. You don't want yeah, it, yeah, anything yeah. to do with that. 
got anything to do with it. It's not. It's not cute. I mean, it is cute, but it's not cute. It's not. It's not going to act cute. Yeah. You know. Yeah. From all the from this uh, quick internet research, which is, you know, questionably not the best research. The grizzly bear is coming in hot. I think we can't quite realise how. I, I think I've never seen a grizzly. I don't think, but the size of them, yeah. I think, is uh, hard to bet against. Comment below. Comment below. Simple course, one yeah. word. If you've not already commented below, comment if again. I've not already grizzly spoiled it. Lion. Yeah. Let's comment go. below. Next up, what we got? Um, do you want to do the one about another good year one? No, that's uh, uh, we're, we've we've already said we're we're hyped, haven't we? We're hyped to have. Obviously, yeah. we've got Matt Jones, John O'Jones, Sam Pilgrim. We've got a killer team. We've got a killer team. It's very exciting. Yeah. Um, Sonny MTB asked opinion on downhill riders leaving the UK to go to New Zealand to train. I mean, right now, from where I'm sat, you can't blame them. It's a it's a bog out there, and um, bro, I'm looking outside. It's snowing so hard right now. Like it's come down since starting this podcast. It was it was not snowy and now it's snowy yeah. <laughs> it's like it's hard <laughs> and that is the best way to describe the weather yeah. right now it was not snowy now yeah, it's snowy. there you go there you go. go to new zealand <laughs> don't have anything to do, <laughs> don't have anything to do with this because it's if you're training to yeah. race like get out of here go do something else i think what those guys really yeah. need is bike time and i think that um by the looks of things i've never been but it looks like you can spend a whole day on your bike riding the best stuff available so you can't blame them can you and like ultimately their their main goal is to be comfortable on their downhill bikes and where better to go right now than yeah, the opposite totally. side of the earth from the uk <laughs> <laughs> as far away as you can but get. yeah there's a, there's a um, he- okay. heavy group of people out there right now isn't there christ it's making me jealous yeah everyone's out there it looks like for sure where's bernard at is he in the states no he's in queenstown oh is he yeah. out there yeah okay there you go you go. What you got, Dave? You you, you um, had something you wanted to bring up. I want to hear it. Yeah, just quickly. I, I totally forgot about this idea until just the other day, uh, until just now. So, I, again, we're going to go all the way back to what we first started talking about—a little bit of introspective thinking. You know, nice, bringing it back, bringing it back. Full loop. Here we go. We're Here going we go. Full loop. This, the full circle episode. Like That's full circle episode full with Jono Jones. Kind of. With Jono, with Jono Jones, Jones kind of. Yeah. The full circle episode. I'm just writing that down. Um. And uh, we, yeah, we talked about introspection and, and a lot of what I've been doing over the last few years is like learning about philosophy and stoicism and, you know, these little quotes that can really affect you, right? And like, you can just leave this little one passage and you go, boom, it all makes sense, yeah. right? And as we were going through lockdown and stuff like that, I was doing this thing. It was called Thought of the Day. I remember, remember? it, yeah. Put, put one quote up and dude, the response to some of those, like some days people would be like, this is it, I needed to hear this today. Blah, 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 blah. But a lot of people maybe don't know where to find this stuff, how to find this stuff. So I had this idea, create a, an online PDF book, very nominal, 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 nominal. <laughs> and what I'll do is I will compile 365 of these quotes, certain, you know, philosophy, etc. We'll put them all into a PDF. We'll release it um, and we'll donate all of the proceeds to charity. And it'll be a really nominal fee to get it. Nomin- I can't say no. that. What is it? Nominal. Nominal. So maybe, it might be like, I'm just coming up with a number. It might be £2.50. And it'll be a PDF you can download. It came up with a name already. We'll call it the Life Companion. And you can have, nice. it. You can have it. And all of these things. Now, I'd just love to hear, before I ingest tons of effort into compiling all this stuff, because basically when I did those thoughts of the day, I put them into my phone on the notes app, right? And I have a little thing, because I'm weird, on my notes app, it's called Inspiration. So if ever I'm feeling a little bit down, I open up the Inspiration tab, and there it is. You've got these lists of quotes, dude. You've and already I, got the Life Companion. I've already got it. I'm ready to go. Like, I can literally do it almost, you know, I've probably got, I bet there's 200, 250, probably 300, I don't know, of these quotes in here from various things that are going to help you. So I'd just love to hear, like, is that a good idea? I think it's a good idea, but I, I don't want to commit to something without having a little bit of buzz behind it first, right? So we're just teasing it a little bit. I think bit. it's a great idea. So the Life Companion, PDF. Good, bad? Mm. Would you want it? Would you download it? Would you pay £2.50 for it? Let, let, let us let know. Let us know for sure. I think it's a great idea. Mother Wilkins actually said to me, I like what Davey put up the other day. Um, yeah. yeah. There you go. It was some you Buddhist thing, I think. 
maybe something. Well, maybe. Well, uh, maybe. Like Could be, mate. I, I love all that stuff. But yeah. again, it's it's hard to find sometimes. Great so idea, dude. I'm happy, happy to do the legwork if people vote. want it. You get my vote. Okay, we're, at, we're on two votes. Um, yeah. All right, it's been... Um, it's been emotional, man. This has been a wild ride. I've really enjoyed chatting. I feel better than I did when we first started. That's the aim. That's uh, the aim. I'm... Just like the weather, it's changed. And now now we're good. Now we're good. I feel the same. And hopefully you feel the same at home. This has been TRC80. Thanks for joining us. Peace and love.